Okay, so, hi. I've been wanting to make this video for a really long time, but I've never been able to convince myself to sit down and do it before. This is essentially going to be my experience of growing up with dyspraxia, and my advice for people who are newly diagnosed, for parents raising dyspraxic children, and people in general who want to learn more about what dyspraxia is. I'm gonna tell you first very briefly what dyspraxia is, but more particularly I'm going to point you towards resources where you can find out more about that on your own. I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience growing up with dyspraxia and how it affected me and how I got through all that and then I am going to talk about any advice that I have for anyone experiencing this for the first time. Before I do that though I'm going to give you a quick introduction of me. My name is Lucy Atkinson, I'm 22, I'm a writer, published in two different mediums. I graduated from Manchester Metropolitan University in English and Creative Writing last year, and I'm currently studying my MA in Durham University in Creative Writing. So that's me in a nutshell. I guess the biggest question you might have had when this video is what is dyspraxia? Before I tell you that, I want you to know that I'm not an expert in dyspraxia. Although I have it, it can present in very different ways in different people. Everything I've learned about dyspraxia and everything I'm about to tell you is things that I've learned through my experience and through researching into it by myself. On that note, you can find a bunch of resources in the description box below this video that will help you to do further research on dyspraxia and how it affects people and who it affects most commonly, all that kind of stuff. I would highly recommend that once you've watched this video you go and look at those more in-depth descriptions of what dyspraxia is. I think the more people that familiarise themselves with this information and understand dyspraxia, the easier it will be for kids like me to go through life full of people who understand them and understand what they're going through. With that said, here is a quick overview of what dyspraxia is as best as I understand it. Dyspraxia, or DCD, which stands for Developmental Coordination Disorder, is a neurological disorder that typically affects either gross or fine motor skills. In some cases, such as in my case, it can affect both of those. So what that essentially means is dyspraxia can either affect overall coordination or coordination of the small muscles in the hands, fingers and eyes, or in some cases it can affect both. For someone with dyspraxia that affects fine motor skills, things like handwriting, stitching, painting, drawing might be very difficult. For someone that has dyspraxia that affects their gross motor skills, things like Learning to walk might take a longer time. Things like catching and throwing and balance might be affected. Occasionally, dyspraxia can also affect the memory and it can affect communication. It doesn't always. Sometimes dyspraxia can affect a person's ability to visualise given directions. So if you were to tell a dyspraxic person, go straight ahead, turn left, turn right, go straight ahead again, turn right, turn right, turn left. They might be able to remember those directions but not to visualise what they mean and because they don't have that mental mind map they might be unable to execute that direction. People with dyspraxia more frequently tend to have things like ADHD, uh, I'm dyslexic for example, or have autistic tendencies or be on the autistic spectrum. That in a nutshell is what dyspraxia is. In terms of my own experience with dyspraxia, I was diagnosed when I was nine, so 13 years ago now. I don't necessarily remember being diagnosed, I know that someone came into the school and diagnosed me there. Primary school was where I feel like my dyspraxia was the hardest to take. In my entire life I feel that primary school was the place where it affected me the most in a negative way. And there could be lots of explanations for that. It could be that as I developed and as I grew older I understood better how to handle my dyspraxia. I'm sure that is undoubtedly true. But what I feel like the actual reason is, is dyspraxia at that time was much less known than it is now. 
When I was diagnosed, there was not another person in my school who was diagnosed with dyspraxia. In fact, I did not know of another person in the world who had dyspraxia. Aside from that feeling incredibly lonely, it also meant that my teachers had no idea really what to do with me and they just assumed that I was incapable. They would look at my work and see the handwriting and basically throw it aside. There was one thing in particular that was really damaging and I don't know if primary schools still do this, I hope not, but that was this thing they used to do where in British schools you had to write in pencil until you earned the pen. So if your handwriting was neat enough and consistent enough, at a certain point you would be allowed to write in pen and up until that point you had to write in pencil. That was really difficult for me because I never earned the pen for obvious reasons and my handwriting was all the more messy because I was being forced to write in pencil so it was kind of this horrible cycle. What I think is the good news about what I've just told you all is that now, I know things are different. People have a much better understanding of dyspraxia, they have a much better understanding of what dyspraxia is. And so that means that someone who is diagnosed at exactly the same age as I was would have an entirely different experience, or hopefully an entirely different experience of primary school, because the teachers would have more of an understanding of their needs. At secondary school I began to develop the interest in the things that I would eventually go into doing a career in. I anticipate that a lot of people have seen the poetic irony in all of what I've just said. Being dyslexic and dyspraxic and choosing to take English literature and even more particularly creative writing is something that I feel the gods probably didn't mean for me to do. But what I hope that shows you is that whatever you decide to do, in spite of whatever adversity you have, it is entirely possible. And at times the things that people expect to hold you back will be the things that surprisingly spur you forward. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Another important thing that happened in secondary school. I think in my second year of secondary school. Bear in mind that at this point I have never heard of another person with dyspraxia. There was no one in my school with dyspraxia at primary um, and up until this point there hadn't been at secondary. I think there were kids at secondary who had dyspraxia but they were much younger than me. And at this point Daniel Radcliffe tells the world that he has dyspraxia and it might sound insane but that is one of the most important things that happened to me that year. It is crazy to think that you are the only person in the world that is suffering with a particular situation and to see someone else, not even necessarily someone successful like Daniel Radcliffe was, someone who's making millions at the age that he was, but just anyone anywhere in the world also has dyspraxia it meant so much to me. It changed the way I lived my life. And I know that sounds insane, but it is true. So after I finished school, I went on to do A-levels. I'm not gonna talk about those really because I had much the same experience in terms of my dyspraxia as I had at school. But I got my A-levels, I got them in English, theatre studies, performing arts and history. And I went on to university at Manchester Metropolitan. This next bit's gonna sound a little bit crazy, but University was the first time that I understood there was something to dyspraxia other than the negatives. And that might sound crazy because I've told you that dyspraxia is a disorder and I've told you that it made my life at primary school very hard, which it did. But there are things that I excel at that I could not honestly say whether I would be able to do if I wasn't dyspraxic. For example, I am a very creative person. I have a very interesting way of problem solving. I have an entirely different thought process from someone who doesn't have dyspraxia. Because my brain is wired differently, I can give a way of thinking that very few people can. Because my brain is wired differently, I think differently. And that shouldn't always be considered as a negative. 
Before I get carried away with that though, back to my experience at university. I really excelled at university. I enjoyed it much more than I had ever enjoyed any academic experience before. I felt for the first time that I wasn't being held back by my dyspraxia academically. There were the occasional thing that was very hard for me particularly. Uh, the long reading lists for example were quite difficult. Sometimes I would be asked to read like five books a week and I couldn't ever try to do that. But I found ways around it and I graduated with a first class degree. One other really important thing happened while I was in Manchester though. In around my second year, the end of my second year, I found out that Jodie Whittaker would be taking on the Doctor in the new Doctor Who, which in itself was such an exciting thing to hear. I was excited to watch it. So excited, in fact, that on my train journey back from Newcastle to Manchester on a Sunday night, um, on a packed train, I pulled out my phone and I watched the first episode on iPlayer. This part of the video really is just a love letter to the writers of that first episode and of the season of Doctor Who. For the first time in my life, at the age of 21 years old, I saw a dyspraxic character on the screen. And you might remember that I told you how much it changed my life when Daniel Radcliffe came out and said that he had dyspraxia. Uh, so... You might have an understanding of how soft I am when it comes to this sort of thing. But I started openly weeping. Basically, like, full cries, sniffles, wails on a packed train with a 40-year-old man next to me and a couple with a baby in front of me um, watching me weep as I watched this thing on my phone. And the man next to me asked me what I was crying about. I literally couldn't find the words to tell him how much it meant to me that some little girl somewhere or some little boy who'd just been diagnosed with dyspraxia at the age of 9 or 10 or 11 was seeing that and seeing themselves painted as the hero for the first time. I don't know the words to tell you how important that representation would have been to me as a kid and it means the absolute world that the writers took the time to do that and to put a dyspraxic person on the screen. It was important to me to know that there was someone else out there with dyspraxia and so I want to make sure that anyone watching this now knows that they're not alone they are the hero of their own story and that they are perfectly capable of anything they want to do. Seeing something like that on mainstream television means that we are moving forward so much from where I was when I was a kid when no one in the whole world had dyspraxia as far as I knew. Which brings me to pretty much the end of my own experience. Along the time of transitioning from Manchester to Durham, I published a poem and then I published two more and one more recently and in December this year I published my first play um, which I'm telling you so that you know it's something that you're completely capable of too. I talked a little bit about the reason that I wanted to make this video uh, in the beginning but I also want to say that I really do feel the more people talk about their experiences, come out with their voices and add them to the dyspraxic community, the easier it will be for children to go through life with someone who understands what they're going through. And if there are any people watching this who are adults who have grown up with dyspraxia like me, um, I really encourage you to come out and talk about it if you can. In terms of the advice I would give people who are new to this uh, and want to know how to survive and thrive with dyspraxia, I would say remember always that you're not alone in this experience, that there are a bunch of people out there who are going through exactly the same thing. For parents with children who have dyspraxia who are struggling with knowing how 
to deal with that. There are so many communities online um, and places that you can go to get advice about dyspraxia. Some of those will be probably in the description. But always feel free to ask for advice and to search for other people who are experiencing the same thing as you. My next bit of advice is to cut yourself some slack and not always think of yourself in such a negative way. Remember that your dyspraxia makes you who you are, it makes you different and it makes you absolutely beautiful in every respect. Um, remember to give yourself a little bit more space to learn Sometimes you will have to work harder than the person sitting next to you. You will have to study for longer for things to fit into your head. You will have to try something more times to get the hang of it. And while I'm sure that will be frustrating, I know it will. If you give yourself that time to learn and you allow yourself that space, then there is absolutely nothing that you can't do. The last piece of advice that I would give, which is a do as I say, not as I do kind of a thing, because I'm still really bad at this, is take the help that you get offered at every turn. Schools are really good now about giving you extra time in exams and making sure that you get the resources that you need to do well academically. Sometimes that can feel like you're being given a handout or like pity is being taken on you but I think it helps to remember that academia can be a really difficult place for people with any kind of neurodivergency, people with ADHD, people with dyslexia, dyscalculus, autism. It is not always the best space to grow and learn or taking any of those bits of extra help that people give to you is absolutely the least you could do. The last thing that I have to say is if there are any dyspraxic people watching, uh, children or adults, or any people who are watching who are caring for dyspraxic people or helping them thrive, I want to say that I am so proud of you and where you've come. I believe wholeheartedly that you will remake the world in your image and that you will become the brilliant shining star that you were always meant to be. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been helpful or educational. If you have any questions put them in the comments below or you can tweet them to me on Twitter, send them to me on Instagram, whatever you feel like doing. If you want someone to talk to about your dyspraxia, uh, I will absolutely always be happy to listen. Uh, so see you around, hope you have a lovely day.